Second one, second example, is a really good example of what I'm talking about. The CIA sent a team of approximately 30 agents to Italy, to Milan, to snatch a guy. Now, probably they snatch him just because of his name, which was Hassan Mustafa Osama Nasser. But ostensibly, they snatched him because he was involved in Al-Qaeda and setting up a local cell. And they did what these days is euphemistically called an extraordinary rendition, which means they threw him on a plane and they shipped him to a country where they do have open torture. And this guy was tortured and beaten and all the good stuff that happens. And then the CIA packed up their cloaks and daggers and left. Well, it came to the attention of the Italian police that some people appeared and kidnapped one of their citizens, one of their naturalized citizens. And because the Italians care more about their citizens than we do in America, they said, we're going to investigate. And they investigated. And there is now a trial of 26 CIA agents in absentia for this kidnapping. Now, how did they figure out who's who and what's what? First of all, they checked when this guy was swooped up on the street, what cell phones were there. Aha, five of them were American cell phones. Wait, five American cell phones with consecutive numbers. Geniuses. You know, <laughs> when I watch... When I watch James Bond, and they have Q, and Q gives them like the exploding fountain pen and the revolving license plates, I like to think that the people protecting my life and liberty have access to the same thing. Instead of Q, they went to T-Mobile. <laughs> no, really. They said, we need 30 GSM cell phones prepaid. And probably some guy picking his nose behind the counter said, OK. Uh, will this be cash or charge? Yeah, here's my CIA credit card. <laughs> By the way, not much of an exaggeration. They all had consecutive MasterCard numbers, too. This is not a joke. These people were traced to their hotels. The other 21 people that they were working with were discovered by cell phone proximity by the fact that 24 of the 26 cell phone numbers were consecutive. I, I mean, it's, it, first of all, just letting you know how easy it is, second of all, sort of cringing in front of you about the state of my colleague's conduct. Bottom line, anywhere you are with a cell phone, anything you do, anybody that you're with, your activity patterns, your likes, your dislikes, where you are on a day-to-day -day basis, whether you're awake, whether you're asleep, who you talk to on the phone, so on and so on and so on, your cell phone is ratting you out. New future. Why? Not because people really want to give you a digital proctology exam. People want to sell you stuff. Bob eats a lot of Chinese food. We know that from his MasterCard. It's 1230. Bob is in motion. The location of his cell phone is two blocks away from a Chinese restaurant that advertises with us. Text message on Bob's cell phone. Hey, Bob, hungry? Eating lunch yet? Wing, Wing Bing Bong's restaurant, two blocks down and to the left. You know what? If I was Bob, I'd say, hey, this is pissing me off. And yeah, Chinese sounds good. <laughs> it's really a good marketing technique. Where do you spend your time, your activities? Now, by the way, this stuff is so accurate that there's a company in Israel developing something called M-Confirm. Bob is using his credit card in Milwaukee. Bob's not from Milwaukee. Bob's from Cleveland. I don't know. Why is Bob using his credit card in Milwaukee? Oh, it's OK. Bob's cell phone is right there where his credit card is being used. Confirm the transaction, let it go through. Or alternately, Bob's cell phone is in Cleveland, his credit card is in Milwaukee, deny the charge. Real world examples. If you are convicted of DWI in Riverside County, California, your bracelet and your cell phone are constantly tracked. Are you going near a bar? Are you going near a car?